3D printing is able to create impossible geometries and able to produce those parts at a very large scale. But where is that actually practical? Well, today we're actually going to talk about how it makes stuff stick together way better than it normally would. So there are a lot of parts out there that have to be glued together. And when gluing together any type of a part, you have to deal with the glue itself. How much space does it take up? What are the tolerances when you squash it together? How far is it going to spread apart the parts? And then how well is it going to adhere to the surface? Do you have to prep that surface? Do you have to change it? Do you have to drill a hole for the glue to go into? Do you have to combine it with screws so that the glue acts as a sealant and the screws press it together? There's a lot of factors that go into that, which require a lot of extra design and a lot of extra effort on the production of the part. But 3D printing is able to integrate a whole bunch of features into the part. And one of these is actually like the part surface itself. If you are using a 3D printed part and you're going to glue a couple of them together, what you can do is actually design surface features that allow the glue to stick to the part even better. Now, of course, just roughing it up is really good. A lot of people will use sandpaper on traditional parts to do that. But 3D printing can go a step further. Since we can make parts with relief cuts, parts in designs that couldn't ever be manufactured before, you're actually able to make a hole that gets wider as it goes in and you're able to make hundreds of them and make them really small. So now when the glue is spread across the surface, it goes into those internal cavities and is effectively able to grab onto the part mechanically rather than just through adhesion. You get a way stronger bond because you have the part itself embedded with the glue rather than simply having the glue on the surface. These relief cuts also allow the glue somewhere to go. So the actual tolerances of the part mechanically designed are what they are rather than having the glue spread the parts apart by building up on a flat surface. So this is a way more reliable way to do it. But if you're actually running a production system, you might not want just a large surface that glue is smeared across. You might want to actually control and direct where the glue goes. And again, since you have so much control of the design, you can do patterns like this so that you denote where the glue belongs. And people just put glue there, glue there, glue there, glue there. And now you're able to basically put some direction into the design of the part itself. So in production, fewer errors can happen. Because with this, there might not be enough glue down here in this corner because people are just smearing it across and there's no clear indicator if it's been placed. Whereas with this, there's a very clear patch where it belongs and how much you need in order to cover that. So it directs people implicitly in the part itself. Now, of course, that's the more interesting way of doing it, but there's really traditional things that you can do with glue slots as well when designing for 3D printing. You can just put a relief cut inside of there, and sure, you could pattern this up, rough it up, give it some ribs, all kinds of nifty geometries to make it more durable. But just having a bead to run like hot glue down or something along those lines is really useful because you can embed it straight into the part. It doesn't add any sort of post-processing. But where this gets interesting, these types of channels get interesting, is if the part is already assembled and you want to insert glue. In that case, you're able to basically create an internal channel. So we could basically create this inside of another part to where we want to deliver glue to particular areas after an assembly is made. And then once you press this together, you're able to shoot glue down from the top and it fills that entire channel. That way you don't have to prep the channel or worry about orientation as you're turning it upside down and that kind of thing. You can stick it to the surface so that it's ready and clamped down and then you can shoot glue in from the side and it fills the entire cavity and machining this type of a part isn't an issue. Now, of course, the slot can be made, but if you wanted to do something more interesting, like having these slots go down into a threaded insert and then fill up the threads with whatever Loctite you might be using, and that could be more interesting and much more necessary if you have to deliver glue through a series of channels. And we'll do another video about that in the future. But for now, go ahead and check out our other design videos where we talk about these types of features of how to bind parts together. Comment down below if there's any sort of specific features that you'd like to see. And of course, like and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.